Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and in this video, I'm going to explain one of the most fundamental tools in all of physics, free body diagrams. In the next couple minutes, you'll learn a simple four-step process for how to draw free body diagrams alongside a couple examples. So first off, what is a free body diagram? Well, drawing free body diagrams is a technique used to visualize an object and all of the external forces applied to it. Okay, that's what they are, but how do you draw them? Well, to draw any free body diagram, all you need is four straightforward steps. And to help solidify this concept, we'll learn these steps alongside this example, where we want to draw a free body diagram of a box sitting motionless on a 30 degree ramp. All right. Your first step is to draw a simplified version of your object of interest as a free body, which basically means you want to draw your object without any of the other surfaces, objects, or other forces that might be interacting with it. So let's just draw our object as a simple square without the ramp. Next, we want to draw vectors for each force applied to the object that start from where the force is acting and point in the direction it is being applied. So first, we have the object's weight that acts from its center of gravity, which we'll say is right in the middle, and pulls it straight downward. Next, we have the normal force of the ramp pushing back up on the object in the direction perpendicular to the surface. And finally, we have the force of friction between the object and the ramp that is acting in the direction up the ramp and apparently keeping the object motionless on the ramp. Also, as a quick note, it's sometimes nice to draw the size of the vectors by their relative magnitude to one another. But since you often don't have all the force magnitudes at the beginning of the problem, this isn't always necessary. So now that we have all our force vectors drawn, the next thing we'll want to do is label each of them something unique so we don't get confused as we go through the math. So let's label the object's weight vector as W, the normal force as F sub N, and the force of friction as F sub F. And finally, your last step for drawing free body diagrams is always going to be to draw a coordinate system. This is a crucial step because it will help you stay consistent and organized while you work through the problem. When you go to draw your coordinates, you want to pick an orientation that makes sense for your object and the applied forces. Since we have forces that are both vertical and angled, it might make sense to do traditional coordinates like this, where x points to the right and y points up. However, if you are comfortable with it, you could also orient your coordinates like this to align with the angle of the ramp and a couple of the forces. The choice is completely up to you as long as you're consistent throughout the problem. So there you go. Those are all the steps you need to draw any free body diagram. And just to make sure you got this, let's do one more example. In this situation, we have a pulley system like this, where the pulley cable is being pulled in tension with force T, and a mass is hanging from wheel number two. Let's say we want to draw the free body diagram of wheel number two, which for this example, we will assume is weightless. So first, let's draw our wheel as a simple circle free of the cable wrapped around it as well as the block hanging below it. Next, let's draw on our applied forces. First, let's replace the weight of block number three with an arrow pointing downward. Then, we have the cable on the left and the right of the wheel that we can replace with two vectors acting upward. For the force due to block number three, let's label that vector W sub three. And for each force due to the cable, since it's being pulled with force T, we can label each of those T. And finally, since all forces are acting vertically for this example, a good choice of coordinate system would be this, with x pointing right and y pointing up. So that's it. If you follow these four steps with a little practice, you'll be a free body diagram wizard in no time. If you found this video helpful, please consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons to support us making more of these videos. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams. Don't let a class get in the way.